and welcome to the episode 30 of What A Fab Day. I am your host, Simon Mas. The highlights of the day include the shooting of a video, one last performance, and a meeting with the King. 30th of January 1961, another BK promotion night at the Latham Hall in Liverpool for the Beatles, with Pete Best on drums. The engagement earned the band £8.10, shillings, about £190 in 2020 money. In 1962, the Beatles, still featuring Pete Best on drums, performed another of their lunchtime concerts at the Cavern Club in Liverpool. Same story in 1963, with a Cavern Club lunchtime concert also featuring the Dakotas and Johnny Sandon and the Remo Four. In 1964, the Beatles performed at the Olympia Theatre in Paris, France. On the 30th of January 1967, the Beatles were at Knoll Park in Kent, England. The band started filming a promotional video for their incoming double A-side single, Strawberry Fields Forever, Penny Lane. Contrary to what had happened in previous occasions, with multiple videos shot in color and in black and white, the conclusion of TV shows like Thank You Lucky Star and Ready Steady Go meant that they needed just one video for both Top of the Pops and the American market. The promos were produced by Tony Bramwell of Suba Film, using a crew from the Don Long Productions company. The director was Peter Goldman, a Swedish director introduced to the band by their old friend Klaus Vormann, now in London, playing bass with Manfred Mann. Having already pioneered the idea of filming promotional clips to go with the songs, the Beatles proceeded recording a video that contained no mime performance, but a scripted sequence of images which hinted at the music and its meaning. Something quite commonplace now, but absolutely groundbreaking at the time. This first shooting date took place at night, with the band filming sequences to be used with Strawberry Fields Forever, centered around a dead oak tree which, at the time, was close to the park's birdhouse. The tree has been removed since. Meanwhile, between 7 and 8.30 pm, George Martin was in Abbey Road producing a rough mono mix of a day in the life, so that acetate discs could be produced to assess the work completed so far at ease. An acetate disc was a cheap type of record, produced mainly for broadcast purposes, that was used in a studio environment to give to the producers, musicians and other people in the known something that they could listen to on their record player. It was generally used, as we have said, to assess the work in progress on the recording of a song. In 1969, we have one of the seminal moments in the life of the Beatles. Today, the Fab Four performed live for the last time, playing a lunchtime gig with Billy Preston on the roof of the Apple Corps building. The roof of the building had to be adapted to serve as a stage, but when it came to it, the show almost didn't happen. Minutes before the start, George was having second thoughts about the whole thing, and Ringo declared that he wouldn't have taken part. Then, the insistence of John and Paul made the trick. Naturally, this was not a conventional gig. For a start, the audience, mostly comprised of office workers on their lunch break, couldn't see the band as much as they could hear the loud music in the cold air of January. In fact, the day was so cold that John and Ringo wore the warm coats of Yoko and Marine, respectively. Then, the whole affair was filmed and recorded to be edited and included in the Get Back film and album. The performance lasted for 42 minutes and consisted of Get Back, take one, Get Back, take two, Don't Let Me Down, take one, I've Got a Feeling, take one, 
one after nine and nine, and dig a pony. First, a quick rehearsal in which John realized that he couldn't recall all of the lyrics, then the proper performance with production runner Kevin Harrington kneeling in front of Lennon with a clipboard bearing the lyrics. Then, while tape operator Alan Parson changed the tapes, having filled up the first reel, the Beatles played an impromptu arrangement of God Save the Queen. The performance was rounded up with I've Got a Feeling, take two, Don't Let Me Down, take two, and Get Back, take three, with the police walking into the building and on the roof during the performance of this last song, asking to turn the volume down. Paul replied singing, You've been playing on the roofs again, and you know your mama doesn't like it, she's gonna have you arrested, but the affair was cut short. In the anthology, years later, Ringo commented about the police intrusion. I always felt let down about the police. Someone in the neighborhood called the police, and when they came up, I was playing away and I thought, oh great, I hope they drag me off. I wanted the cops to drag me off, get off those drums, because we were being filmed, and it would have looked really great kicking the cymbals and everything. Well, they didn't, of course, they just came bumbling in, you've got to turn that sound down, it could have been fabulous. Anyhow, the performance ended in applauses by the few insiders allowed on the roof with the Beatles, and John famously commenting, I'd like to say thank you on behalf of the group and ourselves and I hope we pass the audition. In the evening, between 7.30 and 10.00 pm, Glyn Jones had another mixing session at the Olympic Sound Studios, producing an acetate disc with all of his mixes to present them to the Beatles. Clips of the footage shot today were used to promote the Get Back, Don't Let Me Down single, as they were synced in a way that it looked like the live performance had produced the studio recordings. Finally, let's conclude the episode with a 1970 meeting between Ringo Starr and Elvis Presley. Ringo, already in LA with his wife Maureen, decided to fly to Las Vegas, Nevada, to watch the King perform live at the International Hotel. It was the second time Ringo met Elvis, after the much more famous meeting on the 27th of August 1965 with the Beatles. After the gig, Ringo, and Ringo alone, was invited by Elvis to join him at his penthouse suit in the hotel. This concludes another episode of What A Fab Day. If you liked it, please tell your friends, and if you haven't done it already, check the previous episodes for a good dose of Beatles history. Should you feel inclined, you might visit www.simonmas.com support to see how you can support my efforts in all kinds of music-related shenanigans. In the episode description, the usual links to the bibliography that informed this podcast and to the complete list of songs performed for the Get Back project. For the moment, I wish you a good day and a fab continuation. Simon Mas, music you love!